Classical Physics Tutoring, Chapter 2, Section 2, Steel Fluid, or Liquid, and the Gas. So, in the Section 1, we talk about Pascal's Principle. Pascal's Principle basically said internal force, which is a pressure. What is pressure? Pressure is like stress force within the body, okay? And this pressure, Pascal assume that the pressure force propagate without attenuation and it's propagate to every direction, okay? That's a kind of pressure force. It's idealized liquid and the gas. We can assume it's a good assumption to have that kind of pressure force. But pressure force has to be contained that means there is a boundary and the boundary has the balancing force acting to make the fluid and the gas uh, still. Still means not moving. So equation here at the boundary, there is a stress force at the boundary and integrate by boundary uh, the area element. And internal pressure force it should be zero because it's it's not moving okay for example the pressure machine you have you give a pressure here okay so the the force propagate this k and this is the force per density all the way and push this up right now there is the opposite boundary force which is s to contain this and this is s okay so the surface uh, force of the boundary the everywhere entire surface this is s inside it's v okay when it's not moving it means it's balancing okay and since we know da is going to be volume integral uh, gradient s we need to go back to the vector cal class for review. So, if we change this, then this becomes volume integral. So, we combine them together. This is the condition to be still, not moving. All the forces around this liquid is the balancing. Okay? Now, this uh, surface force the it's it's a uh, pressure is working from inside is opposite direction so if we use the pressure then this is going to be the equation because p is negative the force from outside okay that means this K pressure force is gradient P over log, assuming the density is const, constant. So remember this equation, capital P, this is the potential and this is a force so it's like potential field gravity the gravity g and we have a potential field at the height that's the equation so how this pascal's pressure works is it's like a potential there is a uh, potential uh, 
contour map we can create inside the liquid or gas and gradient is going to be the pressure so we can use this formula we take one to two point line integral the pass delta p so rho k line integral gives the delta p delta p is from one to two this dp right so we know equation dp over rho is going to be k dr now let's handle a little bit more uh, general case if rho is function of p and the sum of gas is yes water is constant but gas we cannot assume it's constant because uh, the internal pressure the quantum map um, is going to determine the internal pressure and also change the uh, density low for the gas so we do a little manipulation when we have this equation we swap this you have to follow this okay then it's going to be p is not simple p over rho capital p okay capital p is going to be integral of dp over rho so this is a case that when the density is a function of pressure okay this part of the argument may be a little difficult you have to review um, the the vector calculus and the previous the, uh, sections to get used to this mathematic manipulation but basically if P is like C or density is like a constant P it's linear relation then we can put dp dp uh, sorry dp over p equals c k right and it's not vector anymore so p is going to be exponential exponent of k c k d r okay so when pressure uh, the density increase as pressure increase then it's going to be um, the exponential function so when you have say r is height in the atmosphere this is the ground and pressure keep increasing right like that this is the opposite scale so it's going to be like this pressure is very low this is pressure and height the pressure is very low and pressure increased to certain level by the opposite of this exponential you can tell um, this is going to be negative so atmospheric uh, pressure is a good example for this exponential function okay the when low is const constant like water the equation is rather simple okay so we cover this one already the gas pressure is a function of height and 
when the gravity potential dictates the pressure. The gravity, there is a gra gravity potential, which is potential uh, function is u and height. Okay, and we bring this into this equation, we will get u plus p equals c or p plus rho u equals c. Okay, so this is going to be simplified if potential is simply z, z is a height and we assume it's linear within the short range of the height. Okay, then it's going to be like this. Now, um, I mean, th this is the water surface. This is the case of the water. It's a water surface. You go deep. And how deep you go, it's linearly. Uh, gravity potential is like this. And pressure increase at the every depth linear equation okay so this is like a not really atmospheric pressure well it is for the small range not the scale of the globe this is like water or short range of uh, above ground atmospheric case and actually what happens is rho is a function of p and experimental data shows p equals rho n r over m t okay and this n this one um, is a constant from 1.2 to 1.4 so this is a pressure um, density function for atmosphere, okay? And R is the gas constant, M is uh, uh, the weight of the mole. The, each gas has a different mole. Atmosphere is a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen at the some rate, ratio. And oxygen is 32 gram per mole and use that number for the M and T is the temperature. Temperature goes up then pressure goes up. Okay, so with the map the higher pressures happen the higher temperature area. Right? Now um, the using this equation but we assume P rho and p is linear relationship right means n is one okay so um, this case we already got this equation but the constant we know more about the constant here rt gm over rt so that's the constant okay so before we we know it's going to be like this here right and this constant c using this experimental data and n is very good approximation we can get this exponential function okay so um, so that's pretty much uh, what we can deal with in the physics for the uh, steel, gas, and liquid. The, it's all come from Pascal's principle, okay, Pascal. Now, 
we're going to expand a little bit the Archimedes principle. Archimedes principle is the internal force. The K in this suppose in the water we assume K is a unit vector pointing down then force or oh, a pointing up actually right the you have an object and this one goes up this is a force and how much buoyancy it will have that's the question so what it does is the force acting on this object you integrate to get the total buoyancy right but this force is pressure and we take only the K component the other um, component of the force doesn't contribute to the buoyancy so that's gonna be the total force right and this using a formula is going to be divergent right you have this one is going to be divergent Um, K assuming law is constant K uh, let's see uh, doesn't have to be constant there's a law delta V yeah so So this law is a liquid density, right? So what happened is liquid density using liquid density the we're going to take integral for the object volume size. So this amount of liquid is a total buoyancy. Okay. And if liquid is getting denser by depths that kind of liquid then this area get more buoyancy right the water we can assume pretty much it's a constant so suppose this is a volume and the liquid uh, density is low so this is gonna be the buoyancy okay and center of buoyancy uh, it's based on this liquid um, density so for the vessel the center of buoyancy is this part right and if this is an iron ship total iron ship weight come from here mg and this has to be uh, balancing now when it's tilted the center of gravity is still here but the buoyancy shift here so how does it work the torque work this way so it's going to bring the position back so it's a stable vessel suppose you have a stick in the water and center of gravity here when it's tilt buoyancy move wrong direction then what's happening it's gonna flip over so most of the stick in the river is floating like this because it can't stand up like this it's unstable so you never design the ship like this right it's gonna flip over okay so um, next one is a pressure machine pressure machine basically 
this is not from Archimedes. This is for Pascal's principle. Well, pressure is going to propagate everywhere at the same value, right? There's no attenuation. So, internal pressure F2 divided by S2 and F1 divided by S1, the pressure should be same. Okay? But total force F1 and F2, you look at F2, is going to be far greater than F1. Right? So, the other machine is created like that the big, you know, shovel machine. It's move around and because it's oil tube going and it's pushing this is F2 and inside here there is a oil reservoir there's the oil and motor pumping oil into F1 so in the rigid bodies uh, physics we learned that when you change the force then this one the distance the amount of oil you move in is going to increase by the ratio of this force so total amount of work is same so small motor is going to pump the oil in that works very hard to pumping a lot of oil to move the power shovel Okay, and siphon's principle. This is a kind of combination with Pascal and fluid dynamics that we are going to cover next. The siphon's principle is when you connect to container by liquid liquid field hose if liquid field force suddenly connected there is a differential in the height right the actually it's from here this diagram is wrong the this differential is going to give the pressure difference between this side and this side. This side is going to flow out and water is going to be accumulated here. It's keep flowing out until this differential of the height becomes same. Okay, so you don't need anything. Now, who is doing the work? Is the free energy? No. It has a pressure here, atmospheric pressure, right? And this pressure is doing the work to equalize the level of water on the both sides. Okay? So what's happened is there is a potential energy in the beginning. Okay? Potential energy. And P1 is bigger than P2. So potential energy difference is converted to kinetic energy which is a water flow until potential energy difference become same and no more potential energy left to move the water okay that's the way it works so it's not free energy per se it's the energy when you lift up this guy the energy is saved as a potential energy and you're using potential energy to flow the water kinetic energy okay now surface tension well we don't cover this one but uh, you know the fact that the the water droplet tend to be sphere right and there is a reason if this kind of water droplet it's need more energy to keep because there is a surface tension the problem is surface tension and surface tension reshape the water droplet to as round as possible which is the minimum 
energy state. That's what the explanation here. Okay, and this is just the explanation using some math concept, and you can challenge to uh, go over this one. Now, there is a two factors: surface tension and water affinity. That means how much the material touching water attract the water molecule. Okay, so when the affinity is not much, then the water droplet on the surface become still round, but it's kind of crashed round because of the gravity. It need to hold the gravity. This is the surface tension. But when you mix the uh, soap, soap increases affinity to the outside the material, it's pool. Then water shape become like this. Okay? And you can see this when you have a very narrow grass tube stick in the water, water climb up. Okay? This is called capillary effect, right? Now what's happened is the affinity pull up water molecule, okay? And it become like this, but now surface tension is going to minimize the surface, so it's pull up middle section. So end up with like this, so this much water is goes up. The combination of affinity and surface tension. Okay, there's two different force acting to have a capillary effect. And it's kind of interesting capillary effect is when you have a mercury, you stick this narrow grass tube. Affinity is negative. Okay, the grass tube doesn't like mercury. So what's happened is it's kind of try to avoid it's pushed down it become like this but mercury liquid also has a surface tension so after uh, dislike surface uh, affinity surface tension pull this down so it's become like this okay so there are two things important forces acting on the capillary effect. Here's a good example of capillary effect. Water goes up to really high because a tree is gonna bring the water up. There's no mechanical pump or anything. How does it go? It's a capillary effect. That means really tiny tube, cell tube is inside and the water affinity is strong. It's pull up the water. How about brush, right? And that's also the capillary effect. And this is not siphons, okay? It's not tube. You just soak up and the gravity bring this water down. So water is going to come down here. That's due to capillary effect. And the sugar absorb the water up because the sugar has a lot of hole and tiny area. It's a, a affinity bring up the water and once water come up, then surface tension bring up remaining, okay? So this all sounds like a free energy, right? So let's consider this free energy machine, right? You put the tiny glass tube into this water uh, pan, it's gonna bring water up, right? You make a little hole, the water drip down, right? So we have this much water moved up. We repeat this process, then water can be very high after all. And this much energy is done for nothing. Think about this. This is one of fallacy. 
Okay. The it sounds like it's correct, but it's not. And if you know, if you wanna know the answer, probably I give you in the next video. So I hope you enjoy this video. And if you like, subscribe.